photography as a way to help illuminate some of these stories that I'm seeing and hearing on the streets. You know, Seattle's an amazing city. There's a lot of beautiful things. Space needles, sunsets, ferry boats. Starbucks, Microsoft, Amazon, Boeing. The quality of life here in Seattle is amazing. Just underneath that surface is another life. This is the life that I see on my walks throughout the city almost every night. With the garbage, the burned out furniture, the graffiti, dozens and dozens of tents, the constant onslaught of traffic and noise from the freeway above, the coming and going of people that they don't know who you are, you don't know who they are. The East Duwamish Greenbelt, also known as the jungle from the folks who live there, is it's a dangerous place. It's like a scene out of Mad Max or in some faraway third world country. You know, the stench of living in human waste, discarded clothing, garbage is, is amazing. It's more than any person should really have to bear. But yet, there's a community there. It's a community that sticks together for a large part. People that talk with each other, visit with each other, these holding areas under the freeway is all they have as communities. Tina's story is unique in that she didn't necessarily grow up as a little girl expecting to be homeless or expecting to be housed underneath an interstate. This is the only place that she has. This is her home. I haven't named that black woman over there either. You know, she had her own dreams, her own hopes, but because of her addiction. These tents, they're not really houses, yeah. but there are homes. Especially with, with math, those dreams took a second seat. When you've lived here as long as I have, and you have nowhere else, these become our homes. The roads to homelessness is a complex set of issues and decisions and bad luck. And the ways out of homelessness for Tina are going to be equally complex. What kind of help do you think this community could use, could benefit from? What could you use to make your life better? Real toilets, real porta potties, um, real showers, you know, portable showers, donated food. You know, we feed near on 300 people here at times. Personally, in visiting these areas, it became pretty evident to me that unless there is a, a suitable alternative in terms of housing, especially for addicts or people facing serious mental health issues, that we're really just moving the problem around from place A to place B. We made this jungle years and years before I ever got here, this jungle was made. It's the jungle, quote unquote, it's just a place for people to belong that have nowhere else to belong. I think Seattle is at a crossroads, like many other cities across the country right now. And no longer can we afford to hide our understanding of homelessness in the shadows. Here we come.